In this video, I'll be building a custom sofa. Rather than spending thousands of dollars for a sofa that I'll rarely be sitting on, I thought I'd just build one myself. This will mostly be used when I have company over, and that doesn't happen too often, so it doesn't have to be super fancy. It's actually a very basic structure that doesn't require a lot of fancy cuts or tools. The material list is fairly basic, and the color text coincides with the colored parts in the diagram. All cuts are 90 degrees, and all joints are 90 degrees as well. The top board of the armrest does have a few slightly more advanced cuts, but I'll show that in more detail later. The first step was to cut all the lumber to the needed length. I was making my sofa 8 feet wide, so I didn't have to cut any of those boards. But this could easily be made narrower by simply cutting the 4 8 foot boards shorter. After cutting the boards, it was time to sand everything down to remove any sharp edges and corners. I'd hate for somebody to sit down on my sofa and get a sliver or scratch. Some boards, like the rear uprights and cross pieces, don't need to be sanded as much as parts that will come in contact with people, like the armrests. I thought about using a roundover bit in my router on all the exposed edges to make it smoother, but decided against it. This build is all about simplicity and almost a rustic look. I assembled the two end parts in my basement, just joining the front and rear uprights with the cross support, at a height of 14 inches to the top from the floor. The armor support gets installed later. Both ends are mere images of each other, so when installed, the cross member is on the outside of the sofa. I wasn't going to build a sofa in the basement, as I'd have no way to get it up the stairs and into my living room. So I brought all the parts up the stairs and stacked them extremely neatly in the living room. The 2x6 are getting leg bolted to the uprights, so I measured and pre-drilled holes for them. The uprights are set back an inch and a half due to the cross member on the end, and this ensures that the boards don't split when we insert and tighten down the leg screws. With the holes drilled, it was time to sand these boards. I know sanding is such an interesting aspect of any woodworking video, so I decided to include an extremely long segment of that here. Just kidding, of course. Sanding is super boring, so I've skipped most all of it. I stood the end supports on their side and carefully placed the rear support on top. I lined everything up as perfectly as possible and then made two marks with the drill for where I needed to drill the holes for the leg screws. My bit wasn't long enough to drill the holes with the rear support in place, so I had to slide that over to gain the extra depth. Once the holes were drilled, I put the leg screws and washers in place and tightened them down with the impact driver. I flipped the entire assembly over and repeated the process for the front support. I ended up shearing off the head of one of the leg bolts as I was trying to tighten it down and had to disassemble much of the sofa to remove it. So if you see a leg screw that doesn't look like it's screwed all the way in, that's why. I ended up doing the repair off camera, but thought I'd mention it so I don't get any comments asking as to why I didn't screw it in all the way. To give the entire sofa a little extra rigidity, and to keep the eventual cushions from falling behind the sofa, I added a 2x4 at the top and a 1x4 lower down. These help keep the sides from skewing and greatly increase the structural stability.
I stacked up a bunch of foam sheets to create a spacer on which I could sit the 1x4 to more easily line it up and screw it in place. I could have also put clamps on the uprights to accomplish the same thing, but I had the foam nearby, so I used that. I added some 1x4s to the sides. These will get covered by the armrests and provide something for the armrest to connect to. I added two 2x4s to the seat portion to keep the front and back from getting pulled together once I get the webbing installed. If you aren't going to use webbing and just lay a sheet of plywood down instead, you might not need two supports. It all depends on the size of the sofa and how thick the plywood is. I lined the 2x4s up at the bottom of the 2x6s so the webbing could flex down without the 2x4s creating a bump in the cushions. To fasten the webbing in, I used some furring strips, or 1x2s, really junky wood but it worked for this. I cut them to fit inside the frame, and they rest on top of the 2x4 cross braces. And of course, get screwed in as well once the webbing is connected. I have a small collection of this high strength blue webbing that I've been accumulating. Nothing like being able to recycle materials from your workplace, helping save the environment one sofa at a time. I determined the length I needed by stapling the end of the webbing to the furring strip and then wrapping it around a full revolution so that the end was covered with the strip. I then measured what that length was and doubled it and added it to the depth of the sofa. I made a series of marks on the furring strips to show where the webbing should be placed and then started the tedious process of stapling the ends down. Once everything was stapled down, I loosely wrapped the ends around and placed the furring strips in place. I ran a screw through the center of every piece of webbing that was wrapped around the furring strip. This provides plenty of clamping force in addition to the screw itself keeping the webbing from pulling out. An actual furniture upholsterer would probably shudder at my methods, but it seems to have worked just fine. Fastening the front of the webbing down was a little less pretty looking. I slipped the strap between the furring strip and the 2x6 and pulled it taut. Then I lifted it up so I could still run the screw through the webbing twice. Had I been more careful, I probably could have stapled the webbing like I did on the back and used the same process, but I would have had to have made much more precise cuts and done more stringent calculations. To complete the webbing process, I needed to weave some long strips crosswise and through the previously installed straps. These are wrapped over a 2x4 and then around a furring strip. I didn't want the webbing to be visible on the outside of the sofa, so I added the 2x4 on the inside. I probably could have skipped using a furring strip altogether, but it was leftover scrap and I knew I'd never have any other use for it, so I decided to use it. Once I had the webbing fastened at one end, it was time to get my weave on. That is, weave the webbing together. I actually have no idea what this accomplishes, but it does look pretty, and any webbing project always includes it. I assume it serves more purpose than just keeping the webbing strips in place, but what do I know? With all the webbing installed, it was time for a quick test. Sitting and laying on the webbing was fairly comfortable, and more importantly, nothing broke. I knew what my plan was for the cushions, recycle some white foam that I had picked up from my workplace. This material is about an inch thick and is fairly stiff, so it won't be a super smushy cushion, but it's still comfortable to sit on. Because the sheets are about 3-4 to four feet long, I had to use multiple sheets to cover the width. I chose to stagger the seams on the seat rather extremely, 
so when sitting on it they wouldn't be apparent. On the back I only staggered the seams by a few inches, as that should be more than sufficient with the low amount of pressure they will receive when people lean against them. I fashioned a large sewing needle out of a wire coat hanger and used that and some light rope to sew the sheets together. Eventually the cushions will get covered with fabric and the wooden frame will get stained and a coat or two of clear coat. But that needs to wait for warm weather so I can haul it outside and not worry about the fumes in the house. The armrests are fairly simple, just a 1x4 with a 45 degree angle cut on both of the front sides an inch back and on the outside corner in the back, again one inch back. The inside corner has a notch to make space for the 2x4 upright. I just nailed them down here with a brad nailer, but later went back and fastened it down with some pack hole screws. Once stained and finished, I'll probably glue this joint together to make sure it doesn't go anywhere if someone's pulling on it while they get out of their seats. Thanks to my employer for throwing out all sorts of scrap materials, I was able to build this entire project for under $50. All I had to buy was the lumber and the fasteners. And here you can see some beautiful glamour shots of my $50 sofa, which saved me thousands of dollars. Full instructions on my website, link in the video description.